let's just hear from some of the tables, like popcorn style, what are some of the things that you see? Then, what do you see? I just was um, meditating on the two, two of our values, interdenominational and international. And I know we've got a long way to go in this area, but if we're truly interdenominational and international in our value as why we should reflect that in our schools. And I would suggest having some way where we can encourage base leaders to encourage, especially guest speakers, but also our own speakers, to remember that if you have a topic that is this topic, that that's been looked at through the prism of many different denominations over the last 2,000 years, and perhaps we could let them know that, that there are other people that see it different ways, so that we can truly reflect an interdenominational uh, value into our training, as well as international. Uh, I've been reading books lately by, you know, theologians from Africa and Latin America, which helped me as my, with my Western grid to see, well, okay, that's a little bit more, well, maybe this way that I would look at it, but these guys have the Holy Spirit just like I do, and so I need to be able to see that through their perspective as well, and I think to Ben to be able to funnel that into our students. That is so exciting. When you think that, that people in our midst, we all embrace from all these spectrums, cultures, languages, nearly a hundred languages that things run in our midst, and all the different denominations, if we would stand up and give all our denominational backgrounds, it, it would just show the beauty, the uniqueness that we can live in peace together. Mm -hmm. I remember one day the, the president of World Vision uh, came and visit and he asked Lauren to say, tell me one secret. How on earth can people from all these different denominations work together? without spending all that time fighting. <laughs> he said, we, we, we have such a loss of energy because they are all fighting together about, you know, if you can have coke for communion or not. So all these, all these things, you know, uh, they, they are battling instead of reaching out. But the environment there is such a peace. So Lauren was thinking for a while and, and you know, pondering and then he said DTS. Yeah. DTS, yeah. that we have a program that everyone kind of is baptized into mm -hmm. his values and his ways of God and his big family that really shapes that. That is such mm -hmm. a pressure strength mm -hmm. yeah. in our midst. What else? What did you discuss? Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. Um, so I'm an outsider, but I've uh, you know worked with a lot of different organizations, and I think uh, YWAM is particularly um, aligned with the values of the majority world. So a lot of schools, they say, you know, we're going to do the powers that be in the Western, you know, culture. And uh, YWAM, I think, has that. And I, I think the other thing that I uh, said is just the strength of being focused on the heart. You know, you, you all are passionate. And you're also focused on the hand. You know, how do you do things? Um, so I think those two things. And I, I like Tom Bloomer's... Uh, Summary at the end, a school for people who have an ADD or attention deficit disorder. <laughs> Some of you may know um, Sol Stain, who um, did a U of N degree with us. He's got a community development degree, uh, maybe in Harpenton. But he did the community development school with us. And I'll never forget one day he said, um, as he's realizing God's intentions for him, I'm going to be the president of my country. Now, you have to re remember, he's from Central Africa Republic, so a very poor country in the middle of Africa. He is an orphan. He raised his siblings, and John Peachy was a big one that helped him um, get launched. But God has given him incredible favor. He's got visas where you think, how could he ever get visas? You know, this is impossible. So it always gives me faith in praying for visas. But he finished his degree. He then went on to do his master's with Regent in the States. And at first they said, well, you know, U of N degree doesn't really count, but we'll take you on probation. He excelled in his program. They fully scholarship him. And I've just mm -hmm. heard from him recently. He's been accepted to a PhD program now. Wow. And he's um, the director of the training arm of the Christian Reform Missions now in uh, West Africa. Mm -hmm. so, and he took his bride to Central Africa Republic a, a few uh, years ago, and they already asked him to run for office. Mm -hmm. But he said, it's not the time yet. Mm -hmm. Wow. Praise wow. God. Yeah. What a great group. Yeah. What a university. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anyone over here? Yes. Well, we were uh, we going to stand up or?
Yeah, yeah, yes. that's nice if you stand up and you see you better. I was thinking about it, an education that's marked by optimism changes our traje trajectory mm. completely. So, mm. you know, if you look at academics today, they're going, well, we need to somehow populate Mars because mm -hmm. this is going to hell in the handbag. But, <laughs> but knowing the biblical narrative that it starts in the garden and ends in a city and God will redeem all things, including Mars. Yes. This gives you a completely different optimistic point of view. So yes. the things that other universities maybe see as challenges, they just reinforce what is. We go, well, what could be? Yes. Because the redemptive purposes of God are stronger than, yes. than the destructive purposes. So, Wonderful. So good. Anyone else? Yeah, Tom. That was... <coughs> yes, please. I was thinking about our school leaders. Mm. Uh, in this room, we probably know thousands of different school leaders. We work with them or we've spoken in their schools, and they're some of the most sanctified people I know because they have to work with both us as speakers and their students. <laughs> but that's, uh, some of you heard me say, this is a unique position in our university that exists in none other. Our visiting teachers are more like a university professor. They're invited in because of their expertise and experience. They come in and bring a level to our teaching. But that school leader person in each, in each school, in each seminar, is such a key to what happens. The spiritual leader of the classroom. Facilitating the trans transformational, sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit hour by hour in the classroom. Yes. Those, those are precious people, and I think um, some of our best resource people. Yes, very good point. Yes, Toba? Okay. Um, I think one major thing, we, we keep saying it, but it's so true, that uh, we are success-based. You know, up in Northern Europe, at least, if you start at university, you're being told 50% of you are not going to make it. Yes. You know, and we come alongside whoever, you know, to make them succeed. And I think you don't really get it, how big yes. that is. Yeah. That, that's a really important thing. Our son Patrick, he just uh, got a special certification uh, degree in Switzerland to audit international global companies. Mm -hmm. And on that track, they had through a three-year time, they have uh, every year sifted 50%. Mm -hmm. And the way they have done that, they just adjusted the level. Mm. So at the exams, they adjusted the level that to pass to the to the point where fifty percent would be excluded. Yeah. Mm. So that's brutal, yeah. and and that is so dishonoring to the to the great achievement of the individual that studied, mm. and suddenly you are there where just the bar is lifted and you drop down. Yeah. And so I think that inclusion, that faith also of our school leaders, school staff, of our professors that, that unlock through that vision for people, through that love for people, there is something unlocked that, that those who are wounded and broken hearted find a place in our midst, yes. that they are actually uh, are free to study, to learn, to grow in what God had in mind when he created them. Yeah. So beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, there's one more just alongside it, and that is in the grading and assessment. Because we start with zero, and then you have to earn every little thing, you know, to make it up. So you start yes. on a negative, and you build up to positive. Yes. But we start on hundred, and then unless you, you know, miss something, or something come off, you know. Yes. So, uh, so even on that is is quite different. So good. <coughs> Have you rejoice? Yes. I've um, been thinking about if it, we we were to take the world and all of our locations, and every week a DTS speaker. Or, a, sorry, a school speaker flying for a week into different places. What would that look like <laughs> on the Internet? And you just saw these, you know, things. And I thought, there's just an incredible network that we have. We have speakers that are moving around, and they spend a week. It's not just one day or two days, but a week is enough time to build relationship, to keep relationship, and then they're moving to another location. Yes. And so we have this spread of international knowledge that is incredible and a network. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I love that we can rejoice and that we can see the strengths 
We will talk about a lot of things that, that we will need to improve on, so don't misunderstand me. There is a lot to grow to, but for the moment, I would love that you with great thankfulness can look to God and to one another and to say, what a privilege to have a university of this kind. What a privilege to be a part of God's story. That, that we are not just an institution, but we are embedded in God's purposes in this earth. Mm -hmm. And we have the privilege to be a part of it. We don't need to excuse ourselves with the university that God created. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He is yeah. the author of it. Mm -hmm. This is not a man's idea. Yeah. This is something that God initiated, and we are a part of it, and we can be so thankful, proud in a kind of pu pure-hearted childlike sense where we are thankful for being a part of the beauty that God creates. We don't need to excuse ourselves that we are different. We can rejoice in the way that God has created us and how he is developing us. We can kind of stand firm and, and, and thank God and one another for his good work among us. Mm -hmm. One thing perhaps just to bring closure to this uh, portion is the great innovation that happens in our midst and that the innovation doesn't usually come from top down but from grassroots up. Mm -hmm. So when you think how our course creation process works mm -hmm. then, then you as deans you kind of receive all the initiatives that are coming grassroots up ideas a young leader has to equip people in a tribe or in a nation, in a city, perhaps extension studies somewhere in the world to pass this on to people that are not full-time studying. That is very unique, that this innovation doesn't come top-down, but really bottom-up, and that we have so much space. So when you look at these classes as a course, as an example, then the innovation that, that we are doing is that we create new formats of these classes. It is not all brand new. Most of the innovation that happens in the UFN are new combinations of things, uh, perhaps built on what is with greater depths, perhaps blending things together. So some of the innovation just looks like this. So this innovation is that there is, these are glasses that have a message. So they have an innovation that you actually have printed something on these glasses so that you have a message and I can still see. Look here, look here. Yeah. This is a, this is a great innovation. Or there, there is another innovation of someone that says these glasses are all too big. So we need to create glasses that are innovative, that are sitting on the nose and are actually holding well to read and you can jump and you can do things, sports and everything and still read. So this is a great innovation to create a mechanism that holds on the nose. It's still glasses, it's still the same purpose but in a different format. And when I look through our schools and courses around the world, there is such space for innovation, yeah. Yeah. such space for uh, making it impacting to the audience that we serve. And that is something that is very unique, very special and highly motivating uh, to the people. It's a great privilege of being a part of what God is doing mm -hmm. and to be engaged in, in his story. So let's see what, what happened in our story. Perhaps we can look at our, at our statistics here that we are pulling from that we are pulling from our record system. So our record system is now is now quite quite well uh, so our record system yes is now quite well developed so that we can pull the 40 years of growth together and show on this graph. So what you see here is 
our growth, how we have grown, the, I don't know, the projector kind of misses some of the years, but here, 78, and there is 2016. We have not dropped in 2016. This is just all or many of the courses that have not been closed or finished yet. So those numbers, they will come in and that will grow up. So what do you see when you look at that? What, what does this story of, uh, of, of graphics tell you? We are growing, yes. We are growing. What else? Different times, there are different levels of growth. Different times, different levels of growth. But what we see also is that we have one program that is the, the blue program. That is our DTS. That, that is really growing rapidly now to nearly 20,000 students, I think 2014 if you go there, 21,614 people that have done a DTS in that year. That is such a strength that our, our entry course into this mission, our foundation course that everyone takes, <laughs> In, in engaging with this university that we have been able to grow and expand that uh, to so many different places and have so many people involved. That is powerful. That is a great strength in our midst. Mm -hmm. That is an amazing strength. So when you see over there on, the, on this graph, you see that nearly three quarters of the engaging of people in our university has to do with the DTS. So some of you are not looking so excited, they think, oh, this ratio should really be different, and, and I agree with you, but it all starts to say, wow, we have a great group of people that enter, so there is a huge potential that we can also build on for the future. So I'm glad that we have 20,000 people that are coming and, and walking through our DTS, and there is something to learn as we look at our overall growth, probably from the DTS. So we will later in our time together hear what is the DTS doing to actually facilitate that growth. So perhaps we can once take the, the DTS, uh, uh, not away, but I mean click it off so that we see a bit a different graphic. So here then we start to see that this middle part, that is the College of Christian Ministry. So we see and understand that a big portion of our uh, students, they, they are engaging with courses in Christian ministries. That has to do with our missions call. That is very good, very positive, because our, our mission mobilizing has a lot to do also with all the Christian ministry courses. Then let's see on the top there, what is this? That's the College of the Arts and Sports that we have seen uh, grow through this time as well. And, and you see a bit that the ratio, so in 2014 there have been 374 people involved with that college. And you see in the Christian ministries was about four or 5,000, 4,370. And then you can go down there one more, that's the College of Communication. 302 individuals have been involved with that college. So those are all amazing people. This is not just a number, but if they would all stand here, those are all people who are called. They have uh, uh, a greatness in them, the way God made them, and they have amazing abilities, strengths, and, and an impact among the nations. So we are not despising the numbers and thinking, oh, this is very low. We are, we are thankful for those, knowing that, that there is room to grow. And then underneath it is the College of Counseling and Healthcare with 1,385. And then we have the College of Education with 192 people involved and enrolled. And then this is the College of Humanities and International Studies, 560. And then Science and Technology, 147. 
and then Community Development 85, and then Family Resource Centre 116. That, that is a, a great overview of where we are at. Mm -hmm. that, that gives a, a good kind of handle on what there is and also on the great diversity where our colleges are at. So we have 20,000 in the DTS, we have 4,000 in Christian ministries, we have 1,300 in counseling and healthcare. <laughs> And, and we have a hundred and something in, in some others. So there is a huge spread among us where we are at in our global impact, in our spread. So let's look at that on the years 2015 and uh, perhaps 14, those two years, 2015 and 14, and quickly through, look through where, what is happening geographically, where the influence is. So... <coughs> When we go down, scroll down, uh, then we see the different colleges. This is unfortunately a resolution that I can't see very well. So, okay, here is College of the Arts. So those are the places where you see where courses are taking place. Those are not the student nationalities, but those are the nations, it, it, it kind of, covers the whole nation. When you are, have one course in China, it's all of China. When you have one course in the United States, it covers the whole. So it just gives a bit of space where you see where are we and where are we not, just in those last two years. When you look at Christian ministries, then you see there, there is obviously uh, more covered. When you then go to uh, the College of Communication, then, then you see what, where we are at in the world. So these graphics really give you a, a, a great uh, overview where we are and where we are not. So this kind of creates vision. This kind of creates deep motivation to see, okay, where is the need the greatest? How can we actually, actually grow there? Science and technology, you see where, where the, their activities lie and then the community development center, and then family resource center, you know, and that's it. And then you can see up there where all the colleges, all the centers in those two years have been active. And, and you can see that there are a, a, a number of uh, spaces that, that we can uh, still pioneer. And you see the numbers where the all is and you can go on the college and if you go down on the college level and tap on a nation then you see the numbers too down here on the lower part no down oh, here yes. yeah so you can see arts and sports in the united states where 272 and then you can go to a smaller nation and uh, somewhere and you you just see those numbers of enrollment but this is a powerful tool to help to be thankful, to praise God and other you for your good work and for your leadership. Everyone involved in making this happen, we love to honor and say a big thank you. And at the same time, we can build on it. And it gives us kind of clarity of, of where, where we can grow to. Then it has a couple other tabs, so we can go and uh, and we have the tab of the of the locations, and and here you can see in those two years when we look at these two years with all the colleges, which location? Uh, just the, all the locations. If you stick together with the, all the locations, this has a a, a good word cloud word cloud on the bottom. Because in this word cloud, it shows you what was in those two years the majority of our students and the size of the letters, if you can see them, kind of show which, which are the main nationalities that have participated. Hmm? So you can see we have overall, there is a big uh, 
United States of America, we see South Korea, we see Canadians, we see Brazilians, and, and so on. So can we move it or is that a whole? That's everything. Okay. So then you see where is this all taking place from all the colleges. You then see the top 25 locations. And you can go through this and you see where they are and you can zoom into every year on their growth and you can go back in the story and actually see what is happening or what has been happening through, throughout the years. So this is a, a, a great tool also for our base leaders for you to see where are your courses actually or your college has a representation, where are key locations that, that it is wonderful to partner with and find ways to actually develop with them. And so, I really love these charts. They are telling a, 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 great, a great story. If we zoom into, uh, into, let's go to Lakeside, Montana. 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 Okay, if we look at Lakeside, Montana. <laughs> you can teach me off the good time to say that. Okay. So, oh, yeah. But it's close, just 60 miles south. Yes. Okay. So this is, this is why we're Montana. So you can, you can see their growth and their development. So you can zoom into every up there on the timeline, every college. You see their DTSs. You see that about half, a bit more than half of what they do is DTSs. And you see how your college works on one of these major locations. So strategically, this is a tool that will help you to see, wow, you know, let's, let's go to 2015 and just see which colleges have worked there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so if you go on this one, we see it. On, yeah. Ministry, Arts and Sports, Community Development, and Humanities. So, you see how much more there is? How much more there is? This is one of our key locations that, that uh, trains, you know, it's probably number three or four somewhere. And uh, you, you can see, wow, that is perhaps worthwhile to, to visit and talk with them and see how, how could we see more things happening. How could we collaborate together? How, how could we be closer to them and help them? Uh, so we will develop this further also to see where are our degree students, how many degrees, where have they done the degrees, so that we can actually start to see and analyze what God is doing, so that we can thank Him, and so that we can start to plan and, and build for, for the future. This is powerful how that draws from our record system and visualizes it. So let's go to, to YWM Kona, or UFN Kona, and just see what, what is happening there. That is our campus with the, with the highest numbers. That is 2015. This is our biggest university campus. What, what does that talk to you? What do you see here? DTS is the main. This is about how many percent is that? About 80 percent? About 80 percent DTS. Okay, let's see how many people from your colleges are there. If you go quickly through the line there. DTS. Um, Christian Ministries, Communication, Arts and Sports, Counseling and Healthcare, Humanities, Education, Science, Technology. So out of these 1,800 DTS students, we have in Science and Technology, those who kind of move on are 26 people, Education 31, Humanities 40, Counseling 60, Arts and Sports 66, Communication 82, and Christian Ministries 144, which is below 10%. That is huge potential to yes. to uh, to build up. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is huge. Mm -hmm. I know there are visa issues. I, I know. I just have been there. I talked with everyone as well. I, I know there is a lot of background 
things behind there which are make things a bit harder to right now to develop with some of those issues. But this is this is great to see the potential that is there. This is wonderful to say, wow, they had nearly 1,800 people going through a DTS and experienced God in such a transforming way, being engaged in a missions outreach and, 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 and tasting uh, God's purposes for the nations. Let's go to Chechu. <coughs> So you see, Chechu has has <coughs> about a, a quarter of those DTS students, and and they they have a bit a higher uh, ratio on on second level schools. So in which categories do they work mainly? They work in the DTS, of course, Christian ministries, counseling, and arts and sports. Where are all the others? So that that is a great visit to this campus to go and see how we can pioneer with them, how we can develop with them, how, how we can expand in, in some of these major places, uh, ministry and, and collaborate. Who else there is a, a bigger one? Perhaps Pichilemu is, is great to see in Chile, to see this campus where, where many of you have been engaging. Wow, yeah. do you see that picture? Yeah. That, that is very exciting. They, 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 have, uh, they have actually more counseling and health care than DTS. That is really bad. No, that is, that is, that is just, they do something they do something that, that, that is really good. They have an amazing apostolic leader there who only speaks Spanish. Just met him last week. Absolute amazing apostolic leader, only Spanish speaker, who really has not only created with a team this grows, but also spread and multiplied. You see, on these numbers, you don't see what they have multiplied to other places because those numbers appear on other places. But if I understand, Thomas, you can tell us what is the story and how many places did they multiply some of these schools? Well, you can't keep track. <laughs> you can't keep track. We no. track here, so... <laughs> yeah, but just, just like in, in Spain, the, uh, the connection there is into Bilbao, into Madrid, and an additional one. Soon we have three FCMs just in Spain. All from here? Uh, out of there, yes. Yeah. I mean, so, well, in, the in, if they go into, uh, into Mexico, out. into Texas, they go... I mean, mm -hmm. out of Pichilemu, for the past 23, 24 years, uh, a huge percentage really has been pioneered. Isn't this a great story? Yeah. That a Spanish speaker that, that cannot communicate with a lot of us, that, that he is in the gift of God, has the room in our midst to apostolically multiply, to expand, to pioneer, to mobilize other people. I love how this Spanish-speaking uh, portion of us is leading us. Amen. Amen. This is Amen. what the University of the Nations is and has space for mm. and what we can learn from. Yeah. Yeah. This is so exciting. Yeah. I love these numbers that they highlight God's story in our midst. Yeah. 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 You know, I think one of the strengths that comes out of teaching, they go often as teams. Yes. And they even draw from other pioneer places come together into a third place. To me, that is a, a great a reflection of uh, extended family coming mm -hmm. together and helping a new location to be birthed. Yeah, and you just were there for the graduation. Yes. How many people from? We had 13 graduating with an alien in counseling. Yeah, um, wow. And yeah, really? there are quite a few more so as we process them. They uh, will be able to graduate. Yeah, and from which nations were they? Um, they were uh, mainly Chile. They were from, oh, Colombia, 
Colombia, that's right. Colombia and Bolivia. Great. Yeah. This is a good story. This is something to kind of be inspired by, to say it is possible. And I'll just say another thing is with, it was the first graduation we actually had in the Spanish-speaking world. And mm -hmm. it was a whole journey for them to understand what do they actually have with this AA degree. Yeah. So it's, it was a shaping of a new perspective. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Wow. This, this part of our story gives me so much hope. Mm -hmm. And to say we, we have forerunners of, of actually living that and expressing that and finding the space and I can't wait till we see that in India and in Africa and in all those nations that there will be these apostolic leaders that will work in collaboration with our colleges to actually make this work. You see that growth has a, a lot to do of course with Thomas and its team so I don't want to kind of minimize that. However, a lot of it has to do with how we collaborate with these locations on the ground who kind of take the legal, financial, immigration, mm. liabilities, mm. housing, feeding them, cleaning their rooms somehow, making this life possible on a campus. That's where the University of the Nations happens. If you take away all the... Uh, all the locations means if you want, press and take away all the locations. Okay, so here you see the University of the Nations in its academic structure. This university is very unique that it happens on places where real people work together with you and with teams to make it really work. But without these locations, our virtual reality has very short hours. So this is really for us very important to understand that as we look at our growth, it is happening. You can click on them again and we can see who else would you love to see. You can choose any of those 600 locations. They are all there. You could choose Perth. I got it right, Perth, yes, let's, let's, let's do Perth. So they had 770 in the DTS, mm -hmm. Christian Ministries, and so you can just see those numbers there. College of Counseling is also strong, I mean, we need to say, and healthcare. You do a lot of pioneering with health. And that is a, a very important growing part in our midst. And College of the Arts and Sports, where Julie is also at home in that wonderful campus. And then the humanities. So there, there are, of course, a number of other colleges that, that, are, that we don't see here. And there is a lot of space for, for further growth. What else? Who would, love, who would you love to see? Let's pull up one from that you choose. Lunavala. Lunavala, okay. On that list, it's quite great to see how they all call themselves. So it, it is a, a huge variety. So this is Lunavala. The good thing about Lunavala is you see who they train. On the word cloud, I love this. I love that there is a big India. That they are not focusing on bringing all the Swiss there, but that they are that they are that they are focusing on, on the Indian friends. They have quite a bit of variety there with uh, counseling, sports, arts and sports, science and technology. But this this is, is wonderful. Let's look at one of the newer ones, like in Cambodia. This is kind of a, a newer uh, location that has been just pioneered in some years. If you do the Batang. Wow. These are some of our young startup leaders. That, that are just there since a few years, 
that just moved into a new property mm -hmm. and, and you see with their vision of, of the university, they have been from the beginning being capable to uh, have Christian ministries close to the, the DTS numbers. Their numbers are not huge yet with a ground total of 140 uh, per year. That is not a huge number, but the ratio. You see, these are friends that are coming up with starting a new location, with vision to actually see the UFN from the beginning uh, kind of developed and, and, and added to. You just have yeah. been there. And of course, it doesn't show, like you mentioned earlier, is the multiplication. This year, they sent out 16. They started three new bases in Cambodia, one in Laos, one in China, and one in Myanmar. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. lots of life out there. And they had a graduation, right, David? They did. Yeah. Cool. The base is led by the, this campus, which is now one of the top 40, is uh, led by a uh, Khmer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Worcester in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So what is great here also, Cambodia. Huh? You see Vietnam, Cambodia, that, that is the great. I love that. I love when the University of the Nations is on places where those people that have no access to education somewhere else in the world so easy that we are actually ministering there and with this work cloud that this is really highlighted so beautifully. Wow, where did we go here? Yes. Mm. Wow. That is Worcester. Wow. Wow. Oh. <laughs> so what, what boosts these numbers here? Christian ministry. Oh, yeah. What's it? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, humanity. So why do they have 227 humanities friends? These are mainly Brazilian language students. So that, that is a great... Uh, that is a great influence and opportunity yeah, for them to say we have many Brazilians that love to come to learn English. Yeah, that's an open door for them where they wave them in. And they can now earn in this in the intercultural studies degree in English. Yes. So they can add a few more courses and talk their English yes. courses and they can learn so you can see how the team there has really been strong in their development, how they started to work on these different uh, course types. And it, it has a deep local impact. They have uh, started with extension studies to, I think, have one of the best that I have seen business courses for the, for the community, for people to actually be trained in, in startup, they have even a project where they have eight dollars a day a week they get, and they need to work with these eight dollars to multiply that on a weekly basis with a project. And, and so it, it it trains people to develop their business plan uh, through a twelve week, one day a week extension studies, and uh, it it has a deep impact into the community. Their, their BCC format includes that, they have worked with Danny on a BCC format that includes a lot of creativity. So they, they do their, their learning uh, outcomes and what they have learned through a book. They produce videos, poems, songs. They do it in different writings. And they go every week to the community to pass on to people what they have learned that week. And they, they are growing uh, wonderfully. So there are some keys in these di different type of innovations that our base leaders are doing. Most of that innovation happens through those people on the ground. And you have the privilege to support them in, help them, and, and allow them to shine within the framework of our guidelines, best practices, and... Uh, and uh, rules that we are applying. What about Port Harcourt? Port Harcourt. Let's go and there to Nigeria.
Yes, that is something new they started. They started a lot of initiatives uh, there. Right now they are really struggling because they lost their campus. Yeah. So uh -huh. where they have been uh, working, you remember perhaps the great story that this mm -hmm. governor gave them this beautiful property to work on. Now the governor has been voted uh, out. Uh, and uh, now the new governor say, oh, you know, a month's notice and you need to leave. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the privileges when we work with those governors. And uh, I don't know if, is it this? Is this the right location? Because they have quite a lot of second level training. Yeah, they have, they mentioned they're starting six courses right now. Yeah, five or six, yeah. Uh, this one's seen quite a bit. So anyway, we, I don't know, those numbers here, I, I'm not sure if we are at the right location or where it's not registered, we see a, a great impact uh, in Nigeria, so that most students come from there. So that is uh, definitely wonderful. Just one more, Who? what would you love to see? Perth. Perth, did we not see We saw Perth. Okay, can we show it to uh, Andrew again? Why then, Perth. Okay, so, so you can see here with Biden and Perth that they have quite a spread of, uh, of involvement of different colleges and, and centers, so there, there is quite a, a breadth and a lot of innovation having taken place. I think they have a lot of schools uh, that are run only there, that have been innovated there, and find a format to really fit with their mission's calling. So they, they created schools around that mission's calling that is really supporting that. So those who would love to talk more, Andrew, this is the, the base leader. This is Shirley Brown here. Yeah, so this, this is great to talk. So this is Musen yeah. <laughs> so we see. Remember, this is only the people that are registered, right? Yes. So do you do things that are not registered? <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> just check. Just check. Just check. Yes. Okay. So I think this this gives you on this tool a bit of a feel, and we make this available if you want to play with it a bit more. We have right now, we just uh, have, are pulling that from the record system numbers from Salesforce and put it in a special format. We are not yet on a place where we can <coughs> distribute that widely because we need to adjust the system that you as a dean have access to your numbers and can see how to work with that, so that needs a bit further development where we need to go. But for now, while we are here, you can see Vince, and he can show you on, on uh, his computer. We are working on some slides for you that we can give you, so that you have your slides for your colleges and, and centers, so that you can work with them, pray into that, and, and also see uh, yeah, that it helps you and it's available for you to show to your constituency. Yeah? Do you have a demographic uh, uh, the result on content by content? No. So there are a number of things that we love to develop further. So this is quite a bit of work to pull those uh, data out of the system and to present it so nicely. And so we have Dudu and Vince have put a lot of time just to get here. And we are now seeing how can we develop this format further. What we don't like, we don't like to use these numbers in a competitive way or we are not, we don't want to go the way where we look at numbers to blow up our arrogance, but we love that numbers are leading us to thankfulness, that numbers motivate us to see this is one way of growth, this is one way of development. And it helps us where we are not. It, it brings a certain reality into our ministries when we see those numbers to be thankful for and also to strategize how we can further develop. 
So these, these numbers make me smile. <laughs> so please don't get depressed, just rejoice on, on what there is and say we are still very young, there is a lot to grow into and it can go relatively fast. And there is so much to learn from one another. Mm. This is good stuff. So all of this growth has to do with you and with many others involved. So I just love to express my deep thankfulness to each one of you for your uh, investing, for your processing, for your uh, compassion, for your wisdom, and, and for your walking alongside so many people around the world to make all of this happen. This is amazing what a team, uh, you and your committees, what there is achieved in great collaboration with all these leadership teams on the campuses and ministries around the world. And that is something very, very unique, that, that we have this combination of those who are actually implement and those who are overseeing and as, as better this collaboration and trust with one another, as more we are learning to work together and synergize and, and help and support, as more we can kind of grow together as a winning, winning, winning team, you know. That there is something about a team uh, esprit that can really change things. Mm. I don't know who of you has seen last night's Champions League game. Yeah. You know, in the... Yeah, no opportunities. No opportunities. <laughs> I was on the aeroplane too. But just to see this Barcelona team kind of in the 87th minute, you know, turning that game uh, to a great win with scoring, I think, four goals in the last few minutes. You know? they, they, they kind of rose up to this team spirit to say, we can do this together. You know? and, and, and they needed it. Yeah, they needed it to win, absolutely, because they had uh, four, four goals behind from the, from the, from the first game. Wow. So, Team is a really important thing. It's not the individual's mm. achievement. There are many, many great teams in every category yeah. of our society. Mm. But the winning teams are those who synergize together, collaborate together, mm. and lean into each other's strengths Amen. and release one another so that we can be uh, have a win, 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 win. That's good. That is so powerful. Yeah. Yes. So let's give a big hand and say thank you to each one of you. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. you are so kind to me. I really appreciate that. Okay, so let's talk for a moment around the table. These are, this is just one expression of growth. These are the numbers of students enrolled. That is just one dynamic. I am fully aware that there is much other categories that we cannot capture just with a number. But as you look in your college, in your center, in your category of ministry, what, how do you describe growth or more or fruitfulness? When, when we kind of move ahead in the timeline, and uh, we, we think on some of these parables to say, well done, you know, you have been faithful, you have been fruitful, you really multiply. What is the form of multiplication that you, in the side of your stewardship before God, that you treasure to say, that is more, that is fruitfulness for me? What, what categories are you looking at in your involvement and in your leadership that you have? You have a huge leadership you provide to this university. What are the categories? What do you, what you do, what do you see as more? What is more fruitful look like for you? What, what makes you smile at the end of the year to say more fruitful? I have been more fruitful. How does that look like for our registrars? How does that look like for you in your role? What is more fruitful for you?